Well, I've been threatening it for a long time. I've been threatening building partition walls in this building to start trying to set up shop. This is the stuff a lot of you have been waiting for now that we're going into another fall season. This is the time of year where we really start hitting this project hard because it kind of starts slowing down with the farm and everything else. Of course, this year with all the rain we had, that may not be the case, but we're going to do the best we can. So what we're going to start tonight is we're going to start building our partition walls for this blacksmith shop. So the plan is, and we'll go into it more detail as the project develops. So we're going to take two bays here, where you guys see me pounding on the anvil all the time. We're going to take that bay and the one just past it, and we're going to come out to these center posts. We're going to build a partition wall through, well, a partition wall right down through these center posts. English is my third language, guys. So anyway, we're going to build our partition walls. We're going to put a sliding door in one of these walls, um, and that's it. Of course, going to be a lot of outlets, things like that. Pretty soon, I'm hoping real soon, we will be running our service entrance out here. And we'll definitely cover that on video. So anyway, stay tuned. I'll see you on the other side of it. Now we're going to go 16 on center because we're actually going to insulate this wall in, uh, with fiberglass because it's an interior wall. Interior wall with a twist, that is, right? I always just, I mean, two bys are pretty simple layout. You can go two lines on it. I always just do one line and put an X on the side that I want my stud on. You know, so a lot of the old timers, they like to have a line on each side, but I guess it's whatever you like, whatever you want. So we're going to tap time this down too and make it so this wall really can't move. We're going to use the same, uh, use the same four inch tap cons that we used. Oh, the ones that we used holding the sawmill down. I got a big box of them. These go pretty easy. Only pain in the ass part is I have to measure every one of them, but that could be worse. Now, here's the thing with putting stuff like this in. If you got to beat it like it owes you money, you made it too tight. Because what happens is, and this one's a little too loose, but what happens is uh, you end up either lifting you end up moving a lot of stuff out of place, and that's no good either. No fun. Either lifting stuff out, or you are uh, either lifting. There, I complete the thought once I get the screw in place, right? You're either lifting stuff out, or you're bowing your uh, studs. And that's no good. Now this one, to tap in, it should be just about right. I kind of gauge it. If I'm about six inches from the line, when I put this thing in and I get the bottom sitting right on the line, I figure I'm pretty good. For when you're on a diagonal, remember it's going to be a little bit longer going from corner to corner or edge to edge. But if all you have to do is just tap it a little bit, that's not too bad. And like I said, if you got to beat it like it owes you money, you're way too tight. And if you can sit and move it a little bit with your hand, Alright. 
Yes, I know I'm using a ball peen hammer. I had cleaning hammers all over the place. I just didn't feel like grabbing one, and this is right here. So before somebody calls me on it, I got you first. I'll explain myself away. I don't know why I have to explain myself all the time. It's just one of those things I do. Now every time I go to turn the camera on, talk to you guys, I've got to turn down Bobby Bear. I do not like turning down Bobby Bear, but you know what happens if I don't? And they catch the music in the background. I get to pay royalties, which is awesome. So we kind of try to avoid that. If you guys ever wonder why some of the music's kind of cheesy, and uh, I try to pick good good stuff, well, sometimes it gets a little cheesy, and the uh, reason being is there's really nothing you can play that's on the radio that you could get without paying some kind of royalties. Now I pay for, I do pay for the music on the channel, Cost me a nine bucks a month. It's kind of handy. It's a tax write-off, but it also protects me from copyright infringement. I've had to re-edit quite a few videos the last couple of years because of that. Went to a royalty-free music site, and then their contract changes with the artist, or the artist gets signed. You end up. Uh, end up getting kind of screwed. I've had a couple of them too where the radio's been playing in the background and I get it uploaded for about a day and then uh, get a copyright claim on it. Everybody wants their money, you know? Haha, <laughs> another night, some more stuff done. We got a stud wall in here. So, you're probably wondering, I have this big building that I built, and the whole idea of doing a timber frame is having a pretty wide open floor plan. That's usually one of the biggest reasons for it. Plus, the timbers are just beautiful, even if they're weathered like these are. They're really nice to look at. But I have found that a big problem I've always had working in a small shop was I'm into so many different things, whether it's repairing chainsaws, whether it's the metalwork, woodworking, things like that. It all tends to cross-contaminate each other. So if you're doing chainsaw stuff, the grease and the oil tends to get all over your woodworking projects. The sawdust from your woodworking projects gets all over the grease and the oil on the saws and just makes a mess. And that was a really big purpose of building this thing so big. So like I said, I'm into a lot of different stuff. I mean, you never know. You could turn this channel on and we could be rebuilding a tractor engine. We could be pounding on the anvil. We could be building a cabinet or a bench. We could be doing just about anything. So I kind of wanted to have enough space to where I could do all of that without contaminating everything else. So we're going to... This blacksmith shop's going to end up 12 by 24. And what's funny is this is almost the same size as what the Pit of Despair is over there, the old shop. But what's nice about it, it's going to be for one, one purpose. That's going to be for blacksmithing. Now I might rob a bench in there to rebuild a chainsaw here and there, but I'm not as worried about that kind of thing cross-contaminating. The other part of that is I do not plan to heat this entire building. I'd like to heat the upstairs in this blacksmith shop and to be honest with you, with the forge and everything going, you really don't have to do much for heating of it. It kind of takes care of itself. But, um, so we'll see. You know, I got thinking in the course of this video, I said earlier on that we'll be insulating these walls. I got thinking about it. It's going to be awful damn hot in the summertime if I insulate these walls. I know even in the wintertime, if I'm forging in this corner, when this place was really wide open... If I lit the gas forge up, it got pretty damn warm around that gas forge. Even the coal forge gets pretty warm around it. So I'll think on that and decide. We're going to leave this backside open for now. On the other side, we're going to put... Uh, I've got a ton of reclaimed 1x10 boards out of that building that we... Uh, it's pretty well torn down now. We've got a bunch of uh, 
two by eight hemlock to get yet. There, there's like 10, 12 footers. We're actually going to use that in the uh, cattle and the lean-to off the other side. I've, I have some telephone poles to set into the ground to use for the lean-to. Probably this year what's going to happen with that is we'll probably just set the poles, get the corral built, and then hopefully over time we can throw a roof over it. These cows here are so used to being outside. <clears throat> I've had overhangs for them before, things like that, to get them out of the weather. And them friggin' things would rather stand out in the wind at 20 below zero than go under something and take shelter. I have no idea the why of it, but that's just the way they are. But, um, so yeah. So basically, this black is perfect size for a blacksmith shop. You don't need a ton of room for a blacksmith shop. You basically need enough room for your anvil, for your forge, your leg vites, whatever it is you're using. And that's about it. I mean, 10 by 10 area, you could probably make into a decent little forging area and still have enough room to not be tripping over yourself. The big thing I worry about, obviously, is fire. So a lot of these walls are going to be lined with metal as we did that one wall. It kind of destroys the look of the timber frame. On the other hand, I would rather destroy the look of the timber frame in that area than have an ember get underneath a wood wall, old dry wood, and light this place up. Now that's uh, one reason I didn't put any foam board on these walls in here. Uh, probably rock wool would probably be the best use, but that is something we still have to be careful of. Obviously we'll have fire extinguishers and I do keep one handy when I'm foraging just in case. So anyway, we're going to keep going. I'm going to run an idea by you guys. Uh, a lot of you guys have watched the Birth of a Wooden Barn series. It's a five-part series on this channel. And while we're gone... I'm going to need to put something out, and what I'm thinking about doing is taking all of those videos and combining them into one long video. Now, for a lot of you, it's going to be very redundant because you've seen all this a hundred times, and we've shared old parts of the project, and I have had people say, you know, it's... Uh, I've had plenty of people, not plenty, but a few people mention, you know, why don't you put something new out? So... When you're doing YouTube, you're always trying to attract new viewers. You're always trying to bring more people in. You play around with the titles, things like that, and you kind of, I don't want to say you become a horror YouTube, but we kind of, it is a habit that we all tend to fall into when we're making videos. And you don't mean to, but you start making a little money on it, and you want to make a little more, and you want to keep being successful, keep growing. So you're always trying new things out. I found what works for me doing this is the honesty of this channel usually is what sells it. It doesn't bring a lot of new people in very fast, but it does tend to keep them around a little bit better. I did the uh, the video the other night with the fire out here, and the title was kind of clickbaity. I changed it up because I got looking at it, and it's like, yeah, that's, that's clickbait. We don't need that here. And I did get called on it by a viewer, and he was absolutely right. But... Um, so anyway, in order for me to attract new viewers, a lot of what attracts new viewers here is this timber frame build. So I kind of try to keep it fresh. See, what happens is, over time, YouTube doesn't share those videos anymore. They, uh, they don't really push them out there. But when I re-release certain things, they do a little bit of a better job pushing it out there. And what that allows me to do is keep the search rankings a lot higher for the timber frame stuff. So if you guys are seeing some of the stuff getting re-released, don't get irritated by it. I know it's the same stuff, but we're going for keeping the channel growing. You know what I mean? That's that's a big thing. So we're kind of treading water here until the next couple of timber framing projects. So that's the reasoning behind that. Not that I really need to explain it, but that's just what I do. You guys know that. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. We're making some progress. I actually have all the materials to do this. How about that? This is one of the few times where I can actually start and finish something in one series of videos without jumping around to a bunch of other stuff. And plus, it'll be that much closer to getting ready for winter. Pretty soon, we're going to be building these doors. We have to forge more hinges. I need three more sets. I've been scrounging metal to do that. So hopefully, at some point this fall, we will have that done. And then this thing will really be closed up and operational. And then over time, we'll pick away at putting the final layer of siding on. And we'll just uh, see what develops. So take it easy, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.